Hi, I'm Bill Clark. I'm an independent game developer in Seattle. I'm going to talk to you today about some game design principles that you can use when working on tower defense games. Specifically this week, I'm talking about how to mix in and mash up elements from the tower defense genre with other genres. First, let's review what we've learned about the tower defense genre so far. We can talk about a basic tower defense as having a handful of elements. There are paths that monsters follow through a map. The player then places towers that are going to help them kill the monsters. And the towers and the monsters are going to have some stats and abilities that make them unique and interesting. We've also talked about the core game loop of a tower defense, where a player plans the defense that they intend to build, identifies which step they're going to build right now, observes the way the defense is working until they can afford to purchase that next step, and then does so, looping through this over and over again. We've also talked about the three challenges that tower defenses present to players. Those are maximizing their damage per second, targeting the appropriate enemies with their towers, and resource management in order to spend money on the appropriate towers. Now let's talk about how additional mechanics can be mixed in with the tower defense genre. I like to think about a continuum of change going all the way from no change on the left, where you're making a basic tower defense, as I've described in previous episodes, all the way through to a complete rework that isn't actually a tower defense at all. So we've talked about the basic tower defense. One step away from that is giving the player some amount of real-time control over what's happening with their defense. One common form is manual targeting. Imagine that this tower in the center is shooting at the monster on the right, but then along comes a flying monster that threatens to slip through and cost the player a life. The player would then like all of their towers to switch over and attack this flying monster instead to do a better job of selecting the correct target. So then you can allow the player to click on the target or tap it or whatever is appropriate for your game to have all of the towers attempt to target that flying unit instead of whatever they're shooting at. This is nice because it is intuitive and clear. Lots of players will attempt this even if they don't know it's a mechanic in the game. However, it can be very difficult to select correctly among all the chaos of a battle as it's going on. It also begs the question of should the towers be smart enough to select the appropriate target for the player without the player needing to manually intervene. Another form of real-time control that some players will take advantage of in some tower defenses is juggling. Now imagine that this monster is going to be pathing along the bottom right like this to the exit. Once the monster reaches this point, a player can then build a tower, thus blocking its path. The monster will then reconsider and identify the new shortest path that's going to take them to the exit. As they move along, the player can then sell their tower and build a new one blocking the new path. The monster will then again reconsider their path and path backwards. And thus, by building and destroying blockers that are changing the monster's path, they can cause the path to switch back and forth, which, awkwardly for the game designer, means that the player can juggle the monsters forever. And this is particularly problematic on the last wave when there aren't other monsters that are going to take advantage of the buying and selling of the tower. And in particular, oftentimes last waves are when there is a boss that's really important for the player to be able to deal with. And thus juggling can trivialize that boss since the player can have effectively infinite time to kill the boss. As a designer, it can be difficult to prevent players from being able to juggle in any maze-based tower defense game. The most common solution is to make it so that there's a net negative every single time the player builds and destroys a blocker. However, you may need to think about how many resources the player can have saved in order to make sure that this negative is strong enough to still prevent juggling from being a problem. Now that we've talked about adding real-time control on top of a basic tower defense, we can shift over to spells. Spells are a very common mechanic in many tower defense games. They might actually be called battle cries or leader abilities or technological something something, but they will all have the same basic form, which is an activated ability with some amount of cooldown and or cost. While they are typically a one-time thing, spells oftentimes act, in fact, similarly to a tower's ability. So they might do some amount of damage, or provide crowd control, a buff to your towers, or some resource gain that's going to allow you to buy more towers. This is nice for players because it gives them a quick fix for any of the challenges, damage per second, targeting, or resource management, that they can feel clever about using when they need it. In addition, it gives players a small additional loop to engage with that isn't super distracting from the main tower defense game loop, but just adds more complexity for them to engage with. 
However, it does make planning more ambiguous as it will add more tools for the player to engage with that operate on a different sort of time scale than their normal defense and thus the normal resource management loop isn't as applicable to these abilities. Having discussed spells, we can now move on to the broader concept of simply borrowing wholesale mechanics from other genres. So how can we effectively borrow a mechanic from another genre? I would recommend that you start by identifying player motivations for that mechanic. For example, shooting emphasizes twitch precision, whereas factory building emphasizes resource management. Then identify the game loop for how that mechanic works in the genre that you're borrowing from. With your motivations and game loop identified, you can then think about how they match with the game loop and motivations of the tower defense genre. If they are non-overlapping, then you're asking the player to switch modes back and forth between them, which might work, but think about what that's going to be like for the player. If they're overlapping, then think about whether they're compatible. For example, if the game loops are strongly overlapping, that may be good in that the player can easily engage with both of them at the same time, or it may actually be bad in that the player is going to be pulled in opposite directions using the same mental resources. One common way to bring mechanics from other genres into tower defenses is to give players a player avatar, that is, a character that moves around the same world that the towers and monsters are in. Typically, this means that the avatar is going to engage in attacking the monsters as well, thus adding some damage per second, and very specifically adding precisely targeted damage per second, because the player's attention gets to be focused on exactly which monster they think needs to be attacked the most. This is a cool way to add mechanics to a tower defense because it allows you to borrow a full game loop from, say, action or role-playing game or, or shooter genres, and that full loop is battle-tested from those games. And the game loops from those games typically operate on a very different time scale than tower defense, in that you're going to be typically having a lot of moment-to-moment -moment decisions and a lot of moment-to-moment -moment precision as opposed to the slow, methodical, observe and adjust model that tower defenses focus on. However, it does distract the player from observing their defense, since they need to be doing that moment-to-moment -moment gameplay in order to be effective with their avatar. And if there is a camera that follows the avatar around as opposed to maintaining some sort of top-down god view, then the player might not even be able to see their defense in order to observe it. Regardless, it's very common when using a player avatar to give the player downtime to work on their defense in between waves, as they're not going to be able to have time to adjust their defenses while they're engaging with their avatar's abilities. Another mechanic that meshes well with the tower defense genre is gachapon, which is to say that the player can get towers from random drops like gachapon machines in Japan. Typically then, the towers are going to be represented by characters or creatures, something that has a lot of personality that players can get excited about acquiring. Inherent in the gachapon mechanic is the idea that the power of the tower is going to then scale with the rarity of the drop that the player got. One of the strengths of the gachapon genre is that it causes players to form a strong attachment to their characters, to their creatures, to their towers in this case. And it provides a long-term metagame loop of progression as the player continues to get random drops and continues to power up their forces over the course of time. It also yields an effective monetization strategy in that players typically will spend money in order to get more random drops to hopefully get the tower that they want. However, Gachapon inherently interferes with the mastery and puzzle-solving motivations since so much of the player's power is based upon the random drops and the money that they've spent. It's worth noting that many players hate pay-to-win mechanics, and thus the Gachapon mechanic can turn off swaths of players automatically. Idle or incremental games also have mechanics that can be brought easily into tower defense games. The idea here is to have the player gain resources over time, even when the player isn't actively engaged with playing the game. They can then spend those resources on improving their defenses. It is technologically difficult to evaluate what offline play for a tower defense looks like, so the most common solution that I've seen is to give the player resources based upon the highest cleared level or wave that they have done. Then when they come back, they upgrade their defenses, play through some more waves, and thus increase their passive income. The idle or incremental genre has a lot of strong overlapping game loops with the tower defense genre in that there's a lot of waiting and observing and then making the correct move. It also reinforces the progression motivation in that the player's defense is constantly getting better over time, regardless of whether they're playing or not. However, as with Gachapon, 
idle or incremental genre mechanics will de-emphasize the mastery and puzzle solving motivations in that the player's success is less based on how effectively they solve some puzzle and more based on how long they wait for their resources to improve. So we visited a bunch of borrowed mechanics that can be brought into the tower defense genre. Now let's talk about how to instead bring the tower defense genre into some other genre. So in order to use the tower defense in some other genre, you start off by building a game in that other genre. Then I would suggest that you identify which tower defense motivations you want to focus on. For example, power, you might allow the player to kill many more enemies than the game that they're playing typically allows by using towers. You may give them a nice puzzle with a carefully crafted challenge for them to navigate, or you may give them a chance to express creativity by adding building mechanics to a game that otherwise doesn't have building mechanics. Once you've identified your motivations, you can then build a tower defense scenario into your game. I would recommend that you keep your game's mechanics strongly involved, in that if a player is playing your game, they have decided that they like engaging with your mechanics. I would also recommend that you do not require the player to be very good at the tower defense in order to beat your game, since some of the players who have selected to play your game chose it because of the mechanics that it has and also do not know how to play a tower defense. So therefore, the requirements should be fairly low in terms of the mastery of the tower defense mechanics. However, if you want to have a very difficult tower defense that requires a lot of mastery embedded in your game, I would simply suggest that you make that optional so that the players who don't want to do that can bypass it. So now we've talked about embedding a tower defense into a game of another genre. There's one more step I'd like to talk about, and that is just drawing inspiration from tower defense, even if you don't actually use any of its mechanics. As with embedding a tower defense into your game, I would suggest that you start by identifying which tower defense motivations you want to bring into your game. And then think about how the tower defense genre engages with those motivations. And then look for mechanics that are part of that engagement to borrow or emulate. For example, the complexity motivation is engaged with strongly by armor or elemental resistance. So you might borrow some of those concepts if you want more complexity in your game. Tower defense is engaged with aesthetics by having the tower attack shapes interacting with the map shapes strongly. So you can think about the way that the shapes of your abilities in your game interact with the map shapes in order to bring the player's focus to the map space in a more direct way. Or if you like the way that tower defenses engage with elegance, you might look at the way that towers can combo together to make a defense that is stronger than the sum of its parts. So let's revisit what we've talked about today. I presented a continuum of how a game can interact with tower defense mechanics, starting all the way over on the left with basic tower defenses, as I've described in previous episodes, running through real-time control, spells, borrowed mechanics, embedding a tower defense into a game of another genre, and all the way to a game that isn't a tower defense in any way, but simply draws inspiration from the mechanics. Regardless of where you are on this continuum, I would encourage you to think about the way that your player is motivated and how they want to be playing your game in order to figure out what you can learn from the tower defense genre. As always, I want to end this presentation with a challenge to you from, in this case, The Art of Game Design by Jesse Schell. In that book, Jesse presents lens number 10, the lens of resonance. These are questions that you can ask yourself about why you're making the game that you are. What is it about my game that feels powerful and special? When I describe my game to people, what ideas get them really excited? If I had no constraints of any kind, what would this game be like? I have certain instincts about how this game should be. What is driving those instincts? If you have a clear sense of what the game is that you're making and why you're making it, it's going to make all of your decisions stronger, better, and more aligned with the ultimate goal. Thanks for watching. As always, I really enjoyed making this video, and I look forward to discussing the tower defense genre and other aspects of game development with you. In the description, you're going to see links to my Discord channel where you can come and ask me questions, to the other videos in this series, to my blog where I write about game development, as well as to a Reddit thread on which you can discuss this. Let me know if you have other questions about the tower defense genre or other genres that you think I should be exploring. I'd also love to hear about games in the tower defense genre that you've learned a lot from that can help myself and other designers do a better job when making their own tower defenses. Thanks for watching. Bye.